Hi, I'm Professor Alexa Chu, and I teach at the University of North Carolina School of Law. And I'm Professor Rachel Gervich. I also teach at the University of North Carolina School of Law. This is the first episode of our video series on citation literacy, which we are recording for our first year law students and also for anyone who finds them helpful. Citation literacy is the ability to read and write citations. Today's video will introduce the concept of citation literacy and provide a basic overview of the purposes and conventions of practical legal citation. When I say practical legal citation, I'm referring to citations you'd see in documents written by lawyers or judges, memos, briefs, court opinions, and similar documents. We distinguish this kind of citation from the citations you'd see in academic documents, such as law review articles or seminar papers. That's both because the citations serve somewhat different purposes in each context, and also because the main citation guide that lawyers use in the United States distinguishes between those two kinds of citations. That citation guide is called the Blue Book. Later videos in our series will focus on things like how to meaningfully read citations and how to format citations to cases and statutes using the Blue Book. So smash that subscribe button and come back when you're ready for another dose of legal citation buddy comedy, uh, or if you're a student when the syllabus tells you to. So let's dive in. Since citation literacy is one of Alexa's areas of scholarly expertise, she's going to be taking us through the rest of today's material. And if you'd like to read her articles about citation literacy, stylish legal citations, and sticky legal citations, and to find out what all of those terms mean, check out the links in the video description. Thank you so much, Rachel. So let's start with practical legal citation and how it's similar to other kinds of citation you might be familiar with. So legal citation has a lot of things in common with other kinds of citation. So one is attribution for claims that you make in your writing. I'm saying something that somebody else said, and I'm giving them credit. Another is credibility. Credibility that show, shows that you have support for what you say, right? So, hey, reader, I didn't just make this up. I looked around, and somebody else also said this. And perhaps there's even more research to support it. Location, so citations to give, give enough information for a reader to go out and find the source that you're referring to. Tradition, where citations go and how they look are also a matter of tradition, and different fields have different traditions. And then books. There are books that tell you how to make citations look right, or at least look right to the people who are supposed to read your document. So this might be a professor or an editor or in law, a judge or a supervising attorney. Books that tell you how to make citations look right include the MLA Handbook and the Chicago Manual of Style. So that's what's familiar. Now let's look at what might be new. So how does legal citation differ from other kinds of citation you might be familiar with? Number one on my list is that legal citations are meant to be read. Remember that Rachel and I are talking about legal citations and practical legal documents, meaning documents for lawyering as opposed to law review articles or seminar papers. So to that end, legal citations are in line with the text. An inline citation means that the citations are on the same line as the rest of the words. So this is a block of text from an office memo, and the inline citations are underlined in yellow. Inline citations are very different from footnotes or endnotes. So here's a block of text from a law review article, and the citations are in footnotes. For footnotes and endnotes, there's a little marker indicating that the citation is somewhere, elsewhere. So those little pink circles are showing you those citation markers. And then for footnotes, the citation is at the bottom of the page. And for endnotes, the citations are at the end of the document. So that pink arrow shows you where the first footnote is. There are many more on that page. That's something that um, might become familiar to you once you start reading law review articles, if you ever do. All right, so because inline citations are right there next to the regular prose uh, words that they support, you can also read the citation and get information from it. So let's talk about another difference. Another one is frequency. So legal citations typically appear after every sentence that describes law. 
if you think about that from the perspective of reading citations, that makes sense, right? So here's some words I said about the law, and here's a citation for the law, and so on back and forth. Legal citations include signals. So signals are words that tell you the relationship between the words that you're reading and writing and the words in the source being cited. So this is similar to quotation marks, right? Quotation marks tell you, hey, these are the exact words that are in the cited source. But what about a sentence that paraphrases what a source says? If I look at the source, I won't see identical words, but I will see words that mean the exact same thing. That's a paraphrase. In law, that's quite different from a sentence that draws an inference from the source. So in that situation, if I look at the source, I won't see words that mean the exact same thing as the sentence. Instead, I'll see words that if I put them together, I think about it, produce a new statement about the law. It's not a paraphrase and it's not a quote, it's an inference. Paraphrases and inferences are common in legal writing and we use signals to distinguish the two. The most common signal is the C signal, which indicates an inference rather than a paraphrase or a quote. And that's C like S-E-E. -E. So down to our last two bullet points here, legal citations are precise down to the page. So rather than citing an entire book to support a statement, lawyers cite the specific page in that book that supports the statement. This is true for citations to judicial opinions where the cite requires the specific page or even paragraph. And then finally, legal citations use punctuation. And that punctuation is the same as in English sentences. So citation sentences begin with a capital letter and they end with a period. They use semicolons to separate independent clauses and they use commas to show separation between two items, just like English prose. So the big takeaway about practical legal citations is that the communication purpose is super important and probably the thing that is most different from other kinds of citation that you might've written before in other disciplines. If you have questions about the blue book, which Rachel mentioned earlier is the citation legal, uh, legal citation manual that's most used in the United States, stay tuned for later episodes, we will talk about the blue book. But for now, do not worry about the blue book or formatting citations. The blue book is just a tool for writing citations to look a certain way, but you do not need the blue book to read or write citations. First, learn to get information out of the citations that you're reading and to write citations that other folks will be able to get information from. And that's the end of our first video. Stay tuned for more.